Hello traders, so in this lesson we're going to talk about the tier list for your order blocks. Before we actually jump in and start ranking our order blocks, let's understand what is an order block in case you're a beginner. So essentially, order blocks are derived from supply and demand. So in this lesson, we're going to refer to order blocks as supply and demand institutional candles. A supply and demand candle is the candle where the whales, which is your big players, your major players, whoever they may be, enter the market and it's visible on the charts via candle form. Large sums of orders are injected into the market, causing a rapid reaction. In simple terms, it's the last bear candle before a bullish expansion, or it's the last bullish candle before a bearish drop. As you can see, here you have your demand candle, which is your last bearish candle. As you can see, this is a red bearish candle before a bullish expansion. And here you have a supply candle, which would be your bearish order block. And in this case, it's the last bullish candle before a bearish drop. When price does visit your supply or demand candle zone, price will ideally reject. So as you can see here, you have your bearish order block, which is your last bullish candle prior to a bearish drop price came up to the zone and rejected and as you can see here this is your bullish order block which in this case this was the last bearish candle before a bullish expansion and you can see once price reached the zone price rejected why because there is orders here this is where the institutions injected a lot of orders like we said previously before you proceed, please make sure you like the video and leave a comment. This helps us continue making these lessons. Let's talk about extreme order blocks. Extreme order blocks are located in your range extreme. So it's the bottom quarter and the top quarter. The bottom quarter will be your discount and your top quarter will be your premium. So you would like your order blocks to be located within the range extremes. So as you can see here, price break structure. This is our previous range, the swing high and this swing low. So this is our current range. So once price breaks this range and if price comes back inside of this old range, now you would mark the new high as the top of your new range and your last low prior to the break as your new range low. As you can see here, price broke structure and came back inside of the range. So now your new range is the swing low and this swing high and you will pull out your fib mark your levels which is this would be your discount and this would be your premium and again you buy in discount because it's cheaper to buy in discount and you sell in premium so if you're looking to purchase price as you can see price broke structure to the upside so if price broke structure to the upside you're looking to continue the uptrend you will be looking to purchase price in your discounted zone So price broke structure came back to your discounted zone to continue the trend. So now that price came back inside of the range, this would be your new high and that previous major low would be your new low. So what you want to do next is you want to pull out your fib and you mark your discounted area. So this would be your discounted area. Now, since this is your discount area, you want to locate an order block inside of this discounted area, which in this case would be this bullish order block. So what are you waiting for now is a retracement. And what is the context and what is the best time to use your supply and the extreme supply and demand order blocks? It's when you already have a supply and demand structure. So you want to look to the left and you want to see that price was already behaving in a supply and demand matter, which is your compression. This would be your supply and demand structure, and this would be your support and resistance structure. If you have any more questions, make sure you look into our website. So now your entry will be right here and your stop loss a little bit below that major swing. And what is your target? Your first target would be the extreme of the range. So like we said previously, you want to buy in discount and sell in premium. So your first TP would be right here. Why? Because you want to sell off your position right at premium. So this would be your selling point. 
And if you're feeling courageous, you can take it right outside of the range to target your liquidity. As you can see, the first target, which is where you're supposed to sell off at, which is your premium, price went there easily. Then price retraced again to grab more orders to attack the liquidity. And this is why I say you always want your first target to be majority of your position. So due to the positioning of the setup and the risk required, this setup is going into our S tier. So let's talk about our flip order block. So let's say you have a bearish order block right here. You have your supply level right here and price just completely destroys it. So now when price does revisit that area again, that supply level turns into a demand level. And now when price does revisit that area, you can expect an expansion. So let's look at this example here. You have your bearish order block. So now price ran through your bearish order block. So this bearish order block now turns into a bullish demand zone. So now this is your bullish demand zone. So when price revisits this area, you can expect a rejection. So let's take a look at this example here. You have a bullish order block. Now price completely runs over this bullish order block. So what does this bullish order block turn into? It turns into a supply zone now. And now instead of a bullish order block, now this is a bearish flip order block. So when price does retrace to this area, you expect a rejection. So we're going to put this setup in our C tier. Why our C tier? Because not only the probability, look at the positioning. If your entry is right here, for you to have a safe stop loss, it would be right above the extreme. So this would be your stop loss and where would be your take profit. So you pull out your swing low and swing high and your first TP would be your discount zone like we explained previously. So to have such a risk, wouldn't make any sense. Even if you manage to shrink your uh, stop loss, it wouldn't be feasible. So an important thing to take into account is how the order block is represented on your macro and your micro. So your macro would be your higher time frame and your micro would be your lower time frame. So on the macro, you would see your order block being represented as a candle, but on a lower time frame, you would see it as a base. So a swing low and a swing high and price being trapped by to a break. So this base right here, which is your shelf, is your higher time frame order block. So what is a hidden block? It's an order block that's located in the premium prior to the bullish break, or it's an order block that's located in the discount area prior to a bearish break. That candle is a representation of orders being injected into the market to break structure and force price to break outside of the range and possibly change direction of the market. The main characteristics to look for is struggle prior to the break of structure and watch orders accumulate in real time. The origins of the move preferably come from a purge or a reaction of a purge. So as you can see, prior to the bullish break of structure, you would see a resistance. You would see price approaching the level, finding resistance. Where's the resistance coming from? It's coming from the extreme and it's coming from an extreme supply. Price rejects for a little bit and pushes up. What does this mean? This means that there were more buy orders injected, more buy orders than the sell orders in this extreme. So when price does come back, there's more than likely orders left to push price up. And same thing inverted. So before price breaks structure to the downside, remember that there is a level right here. There is a extreme discount level, which means there was an order block here. Buy orders were here, so price failed to 
push up and broke structure. So when price does retrace to this level, there is a lot of sell orders left to push this entire move. So what do we have here prior to price breaking structure you can see this was your range high this was your this was your range low this is now your range high and prior to the break you had resistance price struggled to break out of this area so now this order block right here is your hidden block so when price does retrace to this area you expect a rejection and again as far as building criteria you want to make sure you're in line with the trend you want to make sure the approachment is correct as far as an inducement phase and you want to make sure that the order block is valid, which means not mitigated. And price rejects from your hidden block. And you had all the criteria. You had a bearish trend. You had an unmitigated order block. And you had an inducement. So this setup will go in our A tier. So why A tier and not your S tier? So as far as your stop loss goes, a lot of times the ratio is in your favor. You go back to your extreme, the ratio will be positive. But where, where I find this small problem is a lot of times there will be an extreme order block. And we know that price is more than likely to go to an extreme order block, especially like in this case, this is an unmitigated extreme order block. So price could always, instead of reacting from our hidden block, price could always reach for the extreme, react of the extreme before dropping. So an important factor to note is to never trade against the trend. Don't look at order blocks that are going against the trend. So let's say you're trading in this position right here. You're right here and you look to the left and you're looking for your order block. So right now we are on the one hour time frame. And like we said previously, these shelves are your higher time frame order blocks. So this would be a, let's say a four hour or a six hour order block. Actually, let's go on the higher time frame. Or better example okay so this is your four hour order block by that this is probably a four hour order block as well so what you're doing here is you're not looking to buy price if this is where you at in the market once price gets to this level you don't want to purchase price right here why don't you want to purchase price right here because you're going against the trend look the trend here is bearish. So there would be no point of purchasing price here. And the main reason is you're trying to go against the trend. And if you want to learn more about building your criteria, make sure you enroll in our three in one bundle and use code ETM army for 20% off. So lastly, we're going to look at our fair price order blocks. So you want to mark your range, which was this low. This low was broken. Once price came back inside of the range, now this is your new low and this macro is your new high. So you pull out your FIB. Once you pull out your FIB, you want to look at the fair price area, which is obviously not the extreme. So this is an extreme. This is an extreme. This is a fair price area. You're looking for order blocks in this gray zone. You want to make sure they're unmitigated, obviously. This is an order block that's in the top end of our fair price. What you'll be looking for is for price to approach this level and reject. Your first TP is obviously your extreme. Your second TP is the liquidity. So internal external so this setup will go in our b tier why b tier because it's not far away from our extreme which tells us that even if price starts rejecting here and wicks out right here it can still find a rejection at an extreme and your stop loss placement wouldn't be so bad Your first, your first TP would be a one to one. Your second TP would be a two to one. Now, why is it not higher? Because a lot of times 
if it's a support and resistance structure, price will reject from your flip from your flip level, or if not your flip level, price will reject from your hidden block, right? Somewhere right here. So if price skips both of these levels, a lot of time price is just targeting the extreme or completely changing direction. And if price does want to reverse at fair price, a lot of times price just ignores the order blocks completely and just rejects exactly around the fair price level. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe and leave a comment.